Chances are you've heard of this thing called phishing, where a hacker sends you an email and tries to get you to do something. This is a social engineering attack, where a hacker tries to trick you into taking an action, whether that is clicking on a phishing link, whether that is clicking on a malicious attachment, anything like that. There's a type of phishing that costs billions of dollars every single year. It's called business email compromise. The reason it's so dangerous is because it targets businesses and individuals with the specific focus of trying to trick them into sending money to an attacker controlled bank account. In fact, it's so dangerous that it's on the FBI's radar. In May of 2022, they sent out an announcement showing that it's a $43 billion scam. The FBI showed that between July of 2019 and December 2021, there was a 65% increase in identified global exposed losses. That's just the reported losses. There could be more and more that the FBI just isn't even aware of. So if you wanna learn how hackers steal this much money, stick around. Our deep dive starts now. Like many attacks out there, it starts with reconnaissance. In this case, we have the hacker who is searching on social media, in this case, LinkedIn, to identify the organization's structure. They're trying to understand what it looks like. Who's the CEO? Who's the CFO? Who's on the finance team? It gives them a lay of the land to start crafting the rest of their attack. The next step for the hacker is to start to understand what email hosting provider that the company is using. This gives the hacker a bit of a competitive advantage because they can tailor the phishing email down to the technology that that company is using. With this information in hand, the attacker can begin crafting the phishing email and identify a target to who they're going to send it to. The ultimate goal for the attacker is to get the company to send them a wire transfer with a large sum of money. For this reason, the attackers like to target the finance team. So in our scenario here, Dave is on the finance team and has access to a bunch of invoices that they are sending out to that company's clients. The phishing email is not going to be crazy sophisticated because it really doesn't need to be. Uh. Oftentimes attackers are just sending over a phishing email that says, hey, here's a document for you. Please click here to view it. That then opens up a window that the user is going to log into because it's going to mimic their standard email login. Oftentimes this will be Microsoft. And so for a good friend Dave here, he gets this phishing email and it looks like a standard document that he would typically open. So he clicks on the link. It opens up his browser and in that browser is a username and password login prompt for Microsoft Office 365. Dave, being the good employee he is, enters his credentials because he doesn't want to miss seeing a document, and those credentials then go to the attacker. From there, the attacker simply takes Dave's username and password and logs into Dave's email account from the internet. By logging into Dave's email from the internet, the attacker has full access to everything that is in Dave's inbox. This is going to include customer invoices, which is now going to set the attacker up for the next stage of the attack. After looking at the invoices, the hacker now has all the information that they need to send Dave's customer a new invoice with modified banking details. The original invoice is going to have the company's legitimate banking details so that all the wire payments come back to the company. The attacker simply switches out that banking information so that it includes a bank account that they have control over. In addition, the attacker is changing details on the email that was sent so that any emails that are replied to from Dave's customer are going to go to an attacker controlled email address. This allows the attacker to keep the hack going on longer because now any questions that Dave's customer might have get directed straight to the attacker instead of going to Dave. As for the customer, they don't suspect anything and so they update their payment information and send that payment over to the attacker's account. And for the attacker, all they have to do at this point is get that money out of the bank account and then go do whatever they want with it. This is obviously super effective, so the attacker isn't just going to stop at one of this company's clients. So the attacker rinses and repeats and just finds more invoices for Dave's clients and then sends over malicious invoices again, just continuing the same attack pattern to try to get more and more money. For our good friend Dave here, that panic moment happens when he starts to identify that this specific customer hasn't paid their invoices in quite some time. 
Hey, it's me. Knock knock. So, uh you got uh you got my money? So Dave might try to send an email to his customer, but sometimes what happens is the attacker will set up email rules in Dave's inbox so that any emails that he's receiving from this customer are just going to either get auto forwarded over to the attacker or it might just be moved into another folder that Dave doesn't know about. This again helps to elongate the attack. We'll assume in this case that Dave calls the customer and at that point the customer is freaking out because they had updated their payment information based on the email that they received from what they thought was Dave. Now Dave starts immediately panicking because he realizes that he never asked them to update the invoice because their banking information hasn't changed. The only one laughing here is the hacker because he is sitting in the middle of all of this with all this new money. The beauty of this attack lies in its simplicity. All the attacker has to do is get credentials for an email account, position themselves to intercept traffic, and then send updated invoices to clients. One of the best ways for teams to try to combat this style of attack is obviously to try to prevent the unauthenticated logins from happening in the first place. And so a good MFA solution can help here. However, you wanna also have a layered defense. Setting up controls with your finance team and your customers so that if there's ever any change to banking information in an invoice, you get on the phone and call the person and verify with them. Now, business email compromise is a huge challenge for organizations, but another one that's a major threat is ransomware, which you can learn about more in this video.